Today we're going to talk about the five habits that will make you mentally weak in society. My name is Michael Barayev. I was able to build a team of 150 plus sales guys in less than two and a half years. We did that with zero money invested. And now we have a solar company that's growing like crazy from coast to coast like butter on toast. So let's talk about mental weakness, right? A lot of people out there, in my opinion, from what I have seen, and you've probably seen this as well in society, are mentally weak. Okay, when I say mentally weak, they're just not able to withstand the pressure, the stress, the pain. They're not resilient. They're not persistent to get what they want. They get smacked up a little bit and they just, they just dissipate, right? And one of the reasons why people become mentally weak is because of their actions, because of their habits, right? And one of the things that I learned is that your thoughts will lead to your words, your words will lead to your actions, your actions will lead to your habits, your habits lead to your character and your character determines your destiny, right? And I learned that a long time ago. So, you know, the habits that we have will determine how we think of ourselves, who we are in internal, you know, in our mindset, who, you know, who we are as an individual, what we do. And it makes us into who we are, our character, so to say, right? And that determines our life. So one of the, the what I want to do today is talk about the five habits that will make sure and guarantee you to be mentally weak, right? And if you want to be mentally weak, do yourself a favor, follow these five things, okay? And if you don't want to be mentally weak, you need to catch yourself and figure out a way to stop doing these things because it's gonna destroy your character. So, the number one thing that literally destroys you and makes you mentally weak, the one habit in my opinion, is procrastination, okay? Putting things off and pushing the responsibility to a future date will mentally destroy you. And I'll tell you why. For example, I actually talked about it on my sales team today. When you make a promise to yourself and you don't keep that promise, what ends up happening right, is that this little, little monster jumps on your back, and it's called guilt. So you say you're, you're going to go to the gym. You're like, ah, I'll do it tomorrow, okay? And then you don't go to the gym. And, ah, I'll do it next week. And then you don't keep going to the gym. And you made a promise that you want to go to the gym, and you didn't do that. Now that little guilty feeling, that little guilty monster gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Because when you go to bed, that monster is hugging right on your back and still with you. And what ends up happening is every time you say you're going to do something and you don't do it and you procrastinate, what ends up happening that guilty monster gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then one day, that monster's so big that it holds you back from actually creating any kind of action. And then you don't do anything, and then you get stuck. And then you become mentally weak because you have not grown in your life. And remember, you need to have growth. There, you're, either, you're either dying or you're growing. There is no stagnation, I always say that. So if you're letting procrastination get, you know, get, get in control of you, it'll destroy you and make you mentally weak. And that's one habit that, in my opinion, is like what, what, what deters you from creating the success that you want to create in your life or in your business, okay? The second habit is negative self-talk, right? We just talked about what, you know, your thoughts lead to your words and your words lead to your actions, blah, 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 right? So what you say to yourself in your mind, the conversations that you have in your head, the talk, the negative self-talk, right, can literally bury you alive. Remember, you talk to yourself about 70% of the day. And if your conversations are not positive or uplifting or future pacing or future talking and it's the right conversations, uh, it'll destroy you and bury you alive. I remember as a kid, I used to look at a mirror. This is when I was seven, eight years old. I used to look at a mirror and I used to not like myself. I used to say negative things about myself. And since I was a kid, I didn't know what I was doing. And I was repeating what other people told to me. And I was burying myself until I realized at 19, 20 years old, I was reading books like Think and Grow Rich, Magic of Thinking Big, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself uh, by Shad Hempstedler, which by the way is an amazing book, right, by Shad Hempstedler. And I realized that your, your power of your words and your thoughts are extremely powerful, especially the ones that you have inside of your own head. You see, it doesn't matter what anyone else says about you. What matters is what you say about yourself. What matters is what you think about yourself. And if you have negative self-talk, that is a bad habit. Okay, it's not a one-time thing. It's a habit, my friends. And when you have a negative habit of self, having negative self-talk, you are burying yourself alive. And then you wonder why you're not where you need to be because you're shit-talking about yourself in your own head. It's like putting change on your, on your ankles and, expect, and having a huge truck behind you attached to the chain and you wanting to walk forward. You can't move. You're stuck in the same place. Number three, lack of self-care. Neglecting your physical needs, your emotional needs, right? Your mental needs, not taking care of yourself. And when I say take care of yourself, hygiene is a part of that, right? Hygiene, taking care of your mental mindset, refreshing yourself a little bit, going to events, meeting new people, having different conversations, sharpening your, your, your mindset, changing your environment a little bit. Like we just went to Utah. I hate the cold. Well, why did I do that? I, I, we, we were hiking up this mountain, right? For what? To get my mental mind right. 
because I didn't really want to do it. And because I didn't want to do it, I said, I got to do it, right? So you got to take care of yourself. You got to take care of your mind. You got to take care of your emotional needs. If you're around people that are driving you bananas on a 24-7 basis, why are you around them? Why are you putting yourself in environments or with people that you know for a fact are not going to add value to your life? Take care of yourself. I literally moved out of my mom's house when I was 23, 24 years old because me and my brothers were in one freaking bedroom with my mom and it was, just, it was just not healthy. So I had to make a decision. I had to go. And the second I got out of my mom's house, boom, that year I made 100 grand. The next year I made 250 and 400 and started growing you know, like exponentially. All because of what? Me making a decision that I can't be in that environment. I gotta take care of myself. I gotta take care of my space. I gotta t- change my environment a little bit, right? Number four, avoiding problems, okay? A lot of people... They see a problem and they either are talking about the problem all the time or they're avoiding the problem. Like an ostrich, putting your head into the sand and and hoping it just dissipates or goes away. Listen, when there's a problem, you need to get excited about that problem. And I learned a long time ago, the bigger the problem, the bigger the solution. And the bigger the solution, the bigger the reward. So when you see problems, don't look at it as, oh, it's a problem. Look at it as, wow, that's an opportunity for me, to, for me to make money, for me to have a reward, because every problem has a solution attached to it. Every problem has a solution attached to it. And when you, when you understand that you let your mind not wander into problem land and you go into solution land, you start getting the best of every single situation. Problems happen, boom, you solve it, boom, reward. Problem happens, boom, you solve it, boom, reward. And that's the mentality. Right, And if you don't, what will end up happening, if you focus too much on the problems, that makes you mentally weak because now you're literally throwing shit in your forehead every day. You're just throwing shit in yourself. You're just putting yourself down with problems and problems and problems without having a solution-minded mindset. You need to have a, you need to be focused on a solution. Be solution-oriented, not problem-oriented, okay? Number five, isolate yourself. Isolate yourself from the world. Isolate yourself from your situations. Isolate your, yourself from problems. Isolate yourself from your family. Fr- isolate yourself. Watch what happens. They say that when you go to solitary confinement, right, it kills you mentally, makes you mentally weaker because you're not meant to be alone. God did not intend for us human beings to be alone. He meant, he really wanted us to be married with children, with families, with friends and community. He wanted us to do all that because relationships is where the feelings come from. If you just think about yourself only and it's only always about you, you will always be miserable. You're going to be mentally weak. See, the strongest people are not always, you know, thinking about themselves. The strongest people are thinking about other people. If you think about all the greatest leaders in, in history, in the Bible, or whatever, they took care of other people. And when you take care of other people, you become mentally strong because you're able to focus on others. When you focus too much on yourself and it's always about you and you're always you, 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 you are mentally weak. Find me a selfish person. I find you a mentally weak individual. It's not about you. It's never been about you. It's about other people. When you make yourself think about other people, you become mentally stronger because of that. When you, when you put yourself around others, and you surround yourself with other human beings, you become mentally stronger because you learn so much about yourself. And that's what it takes to not become mentally weak. That's what it takes to become mentally tough. And if you want to have a mental toughness in your life, you want to be stronger mentally and and be more resilient, be more persistent and get exactly what you want, you need to be around other people. As a matter of fact, make others be dependent on you and watch what happens to you. The best leaders always perform Especially in sales, the best leaders always perform when other people are dependent on them. Like I have 50 plus employees right now that are dependent on me. Literally right now I got 50 plus people, I got 50 plus friends. I got, I got 50 plus family members that are dependent on me to make sure that I succeed. So if I don't succeed, guess what happens? I screw them over. So I'm responsible for other people. And because of that, it makes me stronger because I'm not willing to give up when shit hits the fan. I'm willing to go through the fire. And that's what you need to focus on. So. I appreciate you guys. Hopefully you become mentally stronger by watching this video and applying some of the things that you should be doing today, okay? Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and do me a favor. Do me a favor. Share this video so that they can go out there and make a difference just like we have on you. And we'll see you guys in the next video.